Hey, uh, how's everyone enjoying their lunches? Is it good? Good food? We're not hangry? We're feeling better? All right. I want to make sure you guys have some food in your stomach. Uh, you, have some, you have the steak. I think you have some dessert coming out. So I have, a, uh, I think, what is going to be a great presentation from you. We, we have a, a lunch keynote. Uh, it's the headline sponsor, CEO, Steve Savasian. You know, I think early markets like this one need interesting companies, companies that are bold, uh, that, that are really trying to re introduce a new technology, introduce a new category to, to, uh, to customers. And that's a hard job. But I think we need these types of companies. And I think Innova is one of those. And I think uh, I'm really excited to have Steve talk to you guys about how to win over the this, this smart kitchen consumer. So let's welcome him on stage. Give him a big round of applause. And uh, there you go, Steve. Thanks, Mike. Uh, yeah, I'm Mike. Yeah, thanks. Uh, first of all, I want to, Mike, I want to thank you very much for the vision and leadership in pulling this off. It's been, uh, it's been wonderful. And last night we had a great opportunity to meet up with uh, uh, some people in this room and, and everybody was super smart and we're super excited to be here and for the opportunity to talk to this group of audience, which we think is going to help shape a pretty big part of our lives. So, so thank you. Uh, I co-founded Innova in 2013. With, uh, with two great people, Jeff Wu and, and Natalie Vaughn. And we quickly, over the past two years, have become not only one of the, the top kind of smart kitchen brands, but we're also uh, one of the fastest growing hardware brands of all time. We've learned, uh, we've learned a few things that I want to share today. I want to talk specifically about two things. I want to talk about uh, the new smart kitchen customer, and then I want to talk about how to win this customer. And so through hundreds of hours of customer research uh, in customer interviews. I think one of, one of the big insights for me is that I really am the customer. And so I thought, it would be, I thought it would be interesting for me to share a little bit about my background. Because my background, I think my, my journey is very similar to the journey that the Smart Kitchen customer has. So I think if you told the people that I grew up with uh, that, that I would be the CEO of a smart kitchen brand. I think there's no way in hell uh, that they would ever believe you. And the reason why is because I didn't grow up cooking. Uh, I didn't spend much time in the kitchen. I grew up in a middle-class neighborhood just south of Boston, and, and we ate things like chicken nuggets, plain pasta with no sauce, uh, clam chowder and mac and cheese. Um, and, and so, and, and I'm still challenged, right? I think it was a couple weeks ago I was cooking or searing some mahi-mahi and I almost lit my kitchen on fire. And I, I don't tell you this because I wear, I wear it like a badge, like I can't, you know, I couldn't cook or whatever. I think, it's, I think it's important in understanding who the smart kitchen customer is. So I did develop my palate uh, and I did it by training really hard and, and what I did was I relentlessly tried uh, to eat every item on the Cheesecake Factory menu. <laughs> that would actually be impossible. But what I did do uh, was I, and it was fun talking to Kenji last night because we talked, we talked a lot about the Boston restaurant scene. And that's really where we both uh, cut our teeth, so to speak. Uh, um, and, uh, and also had a chance to travel and, and, and really try some of the, like, the world's best restaurants. And I think what, what sort of occurred to me was that uh, food and cooking was art. I think that was kind of my big takeaway. And because of that, uh, it felt unapproachable to me. So I've, I've, always, I've always loved science and technology, but I haven't really been into, uh, into art. Uh, and so when my wife told me about this, this crazy thing called sous vide in, in about 2010, uh, I was super interested, right? Because here was this technique that blends uh, food and science a bit. And so so I was really excited to try it. We got, we, we got uh, some Chilean sea bass, right? Which sounds much more impressive than Patagonian toothfish. But, uh, it, and we, uh, we cooked it with this method. And I think uh, the result was that it was delicious, right? In fact, it was better than, uh, it was better than the, uh, the, the restaurant meal that we had, had two weeks prior. So I think two important things happened. One was, for the first time in my life, I felt like I could cook, right? And I think that's, that's why we're here, because that's, you know, if we do, if we do things right, that's kind of the, the emotion that we elicit in users, right? 
uh, so that, that feeling was very powerful. For me to be able to, to provide for somebody that I love uh, a meal that you know, she enjoyed, I think, was, uh, was a very profound feeling for me. And then the second thing that happened was I had, for the first time, this realization that food is about science. And, and I, don't, I don't mean that it's entirely about science, right? but it, it's, uh, it's uh, as much about science as it, as it is about art. And I think for someone like me, that was very empowering. And it was, a, it was a big mental breakthrough to think about food that way. Um, so I think if food is about science, I think it occurred to me that perhaps we can apply science and technology to food to bring about a better result. So our customer thinks like this. Our customer is uh, super interested in technology. Our early customers, it was interesting, 85% were men. That was a bit, that was a bit surprising, but uh, uh, that's, that's a fact. And, uh, I think what we're seeing is uh, sort of the effect of what I think is a broader societal trend, and I think it's something that's interesting to, to think about. We like to say that the kitchen is the new tool shed, right? And we do think that there's, there's a bit of a redefinition of the modern male that's going on, but we think it's bigger than that. We think there's a redefinition of who is in the, who's in the kitchen. And, and we don't think it's about age. We don't think it's about gender. Uh, we don't even think it's about location. Like, we see... Uh, people cooking together on Reddit, right? So, so like, and I think millennials get this much better than I do. Like, you know, the idea that I can, as part of my tribe, have this community on Reddit that I'm cooking with, and that's like, that's kind of the, the, the customer in the kitchen now. It's, it's super interesting. So I think it's, I think it's about inclusiveness. I think it's about connectedness. You know, it was about two weeks ago, my son, who's five, saw me cooking sous vide, and... Uh, and he walked up to me and said, Dad, let's cook sous vide. And he put on his little fireman's apron, and he's cooking with me. And he's been cooking sous vide since he was three. And, uh, and so it, it, it's just like, is he the new smart kitchen customer? And I think he is. I think, and I think that's a wonderful message that it's about, uh, it's about inclusiveness. So I first tried, uh, I first tried sous vide uh, around the time that it, I had my first child. I think something profound happens. Uh, when you have kids. Going out to restaurants are no longer fun, right? And so, uh, and so but, but we're not, we're not going to use old kitchen tech, right, to try to recreate, recreate these experiences, which we want. We still want, even though we have kids, we still want, we still want to learn. We still want these new culinary experiences. So I'm willing to try new science and technology to help me. And I think that's, that's an important thing to realize about the smart kitchen customer. So, in conclusion, I think, uh, uh, I think it's interesting to note that you know, our, our, this new smart kitchen customer wants to use uh, technology to recreate restaurant-like experiences. Demographically, the customer doesn't look like the customer of generations past. And the customer is someone who wants to be able to provide uh, emotionally for the people that he or she loves. And so I want to talk next about how to win this customer. So I think we've, I think we've learned some really important lessons that we can that we can uh, pass on. I think the first one, uh, and the first piece of advice that I give to any startup is learn fast to win. Uh, and I, I think startups are sort of naturally positioned uh, to do better than, than uh, big companies. And a lot of it has to do with the fact that they're, uh, they're agile, they're lean, they can, they can act quickly, they, they don't have these layers of bureaucracy yet. And I think for the first time we've got kind of this funding infrastructure that exists in crowdfunding. So we crowdfunded in early 2014, and, uh, and it was an interesting experience. We, we were the fastest uh, project ever to eclipse a, a million dollars, and uh, um, you know, I think we're still the most funded food project of all time. But I think what was more important than the money that we got was we got this affirmation of this strategic direction this new strategic direction that was about connectedness, right? Uh, and we got valuable customer insights. So I, I think the amount, like, when, you know, in talking, in talking to customers, I think, we were able to form a community uh, out of that, that initial Kickstarter group. And that was extremely valuable for us. And I think that's something that's unique to, uh, to startups today. The one, the one thing I'd qualify, though, is just, is to, is to learn the right lessons, right? Like, uh, there's a lot of user research that isn't done uh, uh, 
in, a, in a rigorous way. There's a, there's a great book by Erica Klein. It's just enough user research. And I think you know, the first rule of user research is uh, never ask the customer what they want. right? So look at, look at behavior, look at pain points, and be rigorous about how you can develop solutions to like, really solve those pain points. So I think, that's, uh, I think that's another lesson that we've learned. I think uh, the second thing that I'd share is that I think it's important for brands to focus relentlessly on delivering value to customers. That sounds really simple, right? Uh, it was a there was a great Medium post that was published yesterday. I don't know if anybody had a chance to look at it, but it was by David Heinemer Hansen. I don't know if uh, people in, in this room know who that is, but he, uh, uh, he's a creator of a product called Basecamp. And, uh, and it was great. He talked about how uh, it's, you know, it's no longer enough to put a dent in the universe. We want to own the universe. It's no longer enough to, you know, for us to serve customers. We want to capture customers, right? And I think it was like, it was super, I'd recommend that article because it really brings into perspective what's super important to us, which is really delivering value to customers. I think in this industry, there's been a history of technology for technology's sake. And I think what that's resulted in is a lot of skepticism when new products come to market. I know we, we faced skepticism when we brought our, uh, our first connected device to, to market. And, uh, and I think what we know now with, with, uh, with usage statistics, if, if, you, you know, if you think that uh, usage equates to utility, we know, you know with active users in the hundreds of thousands that, uh, that what, what we're doing is, is useful. Uh, uh, and then with the Wi-Fi system, I think, you know, again, it was like uh, skepticism over, you know, over, the, uh, over the product and the use case. But again, we know through usage that, it, that it's been useful. Uh, and I think, I think we've had a principle. That, that has helped us. And it's, it's to focus on the use cases uh, you know, that can only be achieved through connectedness. And I'll say that again, because I think it's super important, right? Focus on use cases that can only be achieved by connectedness. And I'll give you an example, right? The, the Wi-Fi system that we're coming out with, uh, you can wake up in the morning, you can put frozen food in a pot, right? And like, we like to say, come home to the best meal ever, right? We could only do that uh, because we're a connected device. You can only get you know, food safety warnings and uh, notifications that you need throughout the day because, because we're a connected device. Right? If you're going to be late, for, if you're going to be late, we can drop it down to a holding temperature for you. That, that's something that we can only do because we're a connected device. So I like that feature. I like Pico Brew. I think Pico Brew is a super interesting product, right? It's like, I don't even like beer, really. Uh, um, I like Hard liquor. <laughs> um, but to, to you know, uh, the idea that I can, uh, in my phone, send a, re send like a recipe to uh, a home brew machine and, and get whatever beer I want from anywhere in the world, that's something that you could only do with connectedness. So I think that's, uh, I think that's a really interesting product. So I think the features must be one of, uh, one of three things. I think they need to be convenient, they need to produce better results, and they need to produce an experience. And I think convenience breaks down into two buckets, right? I think it's about time savings and ease of use. And so, it's, so when I think about the time saving aspect, I think you know, about, it's easy for me to think about severe, right? I think, uh, um, but it was, a, it was a few months ago, I was swimming with my kids in, the, in a pool, in my pool in my backyard, and I totally forgot that I was cooking this chicken breast. And, uh, and I came inside, I walked in my kitchen, and I was surprised. I was like, oh, I totally forgot about this chicken breast. And, uh, and so I took it out, and we, we ended up searing it, and it was delicious, right? And I think about what that experience would have been like if I had done that with traditional cooking. You know, I, I might have burned down my house. Probably not, but maybe. Uh, I certainly would have ruined the, the chicken, but I think what it did for me was it allowed me to be present with my family, right? I, I wasn't even worried about the food. It was like, and that was something that was like so game-changing for me. You know, you think about how fa I've got three kids, thinking about how fast they grow. Uh, that was a big deal for me, so. Uh, uh, I think, I think uh, companies that, that make things eat, like, I, I love like plated and blue apron, right? To, to be able to receive all the ingredients you need and then, a, and then a really nice recipe that walks you through an experience and then you're done, I think, uh, I think you know, that, that, that certainly makes things easier. Um, and I also think they produce a good result, right? So you can't, you, know, you can't forget about results. And I also think what, what tucks under results is not, it's not only about taste, but it's about health. 
right? So I, I, I love companies like uh, Orange Chef and, and Drop and, and Perfect Company and, and you know, the companies that are, that are really trying to help us understand what's going into our bodies. I think those are super interesting companies. Uh, I, I, love, I, I love companies that give great experiences, right? Um, when my wife was pregnant with our most recent child, <laughs> uh, he's four months now, um, I ordered Blue Apron. And I thought I, thought I, would, I would cook. Um, but my in-laws came, and they like to get involved in a lot. Uh, and I'll, I'll stop. Uh, but uh, they had being Blue Apron. And I saw, I saw them like cooking with each other, and it was really kind of sweet to see like the experience that they had, you know, to watch them interact and to go through the process. And so think about like that's what, that's what smart kitchen products are doing, right? I think that's really cool, that, that type of experience. Uh, I learn a lot from like Kenji, right? I think like what an experience to learn and to go through those recipes. I do that all the time with, at home, to go through those recipes um, and to experience cooking them with, with somebody that I care about is amazing. So. I think it's important, really important, uh, for brands to live their values, uh, smart kitchen brands. I think when we started over, there were, there were two values that we had that, that uh, were really important to us. One, one was that uh, we really wanted to improve people's lives uh, in the kitchen through science and technology. And then the other value is we wanted it to be accessible. And that meant two things to us. We wanted the device to be affordable and we also wanted it to be dead simple to use, right? So that everybody could be included. And I love the metaphor that we use. It was like, we wanted everyone to have a seat at the table. So I think that smart kitchen brands can have these amazing values because they, we can play such an incredible part of people's lives. Like we can, you know, we can have values like around educating, around improving the quality of life in the kitchen, improving results, providing these great experiences, right? Uh, I had a super interesting talk with Kenji last night about uh, about, about this idea, uh, you know, the, the brand value you have will be reflected in your community and how to engage the community around your values and have them build, build the values as well. Uh, so I think, I think it'd be smart for, for brands to think about that. Um, so I guess, you know, learn the right lessons fast. I think it's important to focus on valuable features and I think it's super important to walk the walk. So in closing, I just have a couple, couple things I'd like to mention. I think uh, I love thinking about the role of the kitchen in our, in our lives. So uh, the kitchen, when people come into my house, the place they go is, uh, is the kitchen. It doesn't matter like, how much time and energy my wife puts into like, making you know, this other room look nice. It's like people will always go, uh, always go into the kitchen. And it's the same for me when I go in, into other people's kitchen. And so I think what, you know, the role of the kitchen plays that is that's where we congregate. That's, you know, the kitchen brings us together. And I think, um, I think smart kitchen companies would be wise to, you know, to, to really think about that and to consider about how your products can kind of help bring people together. Um, I love thinking about the smart kitchen with respect to the rest of the connected home. Uh, because I, you know, I think the connected home for the longest time has been about lights, locks, and nests, right? And I think about that like juxtaposed to like the potential of the smart kitchen, and it's just not fair, right? I think like, you know, and let me give you an example, right? If, if it's my birthday, right? It'd be silly for like Nest to send me a push notification and say, "Hey, it's your birthday. We're going to raise the temperature five degrees today for you," <laughs> right? But a smart kitchen brand can send a push notification saying. It's your wife's birthday, you know, tomorrow. Uh, last year, she loved the tiramisu you made for her. This year, make creme brulee. And by the way, like, you need milk and eggs. Do you want us to order it for you? Pick it up on your way home, right? Uh, the, the smart kitchen companies can, like, literally take somebody like me from cooking Chilean sea bass, uh, being a beginner, to educating me to doing, what's the next dish I'm going to do? Is it, is it duck breast? To doing, you know, something that's really advanced and making me feel like I've got mastery over this process. That's something that's unique to smart kitchen brands that the rest of the connected home can't do. So I think, uh, I think most technology is isolating. I think that's another point that I wanted to make. You know, if you think about like the effect the iPhone has in our lives, 
you know, it's like we're, we're totally not present uh, uh, when we, whenever we're on our phone or, you know, what, what iPads do. But I think what, what's amazing about the smart kitchen uh, and smart kitchen technology is it can bring us together, right? It can actually, like, it forges, like, these great experiences that we're having with each other. It's very personal and human. And I think that's a wonderful thing about this, uh, this industry. So, I, you know, I think the point that I want to make is more than any other room in the connected home, the smart kitchen can change lives and it can change culture, right? And I think that's, I think that's super powerful. So, so anyway, so I, I look at like my life now versus uh, sort of where I came from. And, and I guess, uh, um, you know, what I'm doing now is like I'm cooking recipes that Kenji creates. I'm watching Chef Steps videos. I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm experimenting with Blue Apron. I'm using sous vide and like I, I, I can cook. Um, and so I think, I think about what the smart kitchen has done for me in my life, and it makes me like super proud to be in the same like in the same industry as companies like Pico Brew, as Plated, as Blue Apron, uh, as Perfect uh, Company, as uh, to 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 be in the same industry with you know people like Chris Young and to and and people like and to work with somebody like Kenji. Uh, I, I'm I'm just really really proud of that, and I'm proud to you know to work with everybody in this room and building the future of the smart kitchen. So thank you.